This is Government Unfiltered. I'm Dan Williams. This podcast is a reading of the December 22, 2022 final report from the Select Committee to Investigate the January 6th Attack on the United States Capitol. Chapter 4. Just Call It Corrupt and Leave the Rest to Me. 4.1. The DOJ Found No Significant Evidence of Fraud. U.S. Attorney General William Barr knew there would be trouble before all the votes had been counted. So, right out of the box on election night, the president claimed that there was major fraud underway, Barr explained. I mean, this happened, as far as I could tell, before there was actually any potential of looking at evidence. President Trump was quick to claim there was major fraud based solely on the phenomenon known as the Red Mirage. As explained elsewhere in this report, Democrats were more inclined to vote via mail-in ballot during the 2020 presidential election than Republicans, who were more likely to vote in person on Election Day. This was widely known and partly a result of President Trump's own public statements criticizing mail-in balloting. It also created a gap in the timing of how votes were tallied. The early vote tally favored Republicans on Election Night because the mail-in ballots which skewed toward Democrats, were not yet fully counted. This occurred not just in 2020, but also in previous elections. The president knew of this phenomenon, but exploited it on election night nonetheless, as he and his allies had planned to do. President Trump exploited this timing gap and used it as the basis for this broad claim that there was major fraud, Barr said. But the attorney general didn't think much of that. People had been talking for weeks, and everyone understood for weeks that that was going to be what happened on election night, Barr explained. Cities with Democratic majorities in the battleground states wouldn't have their votes fully counted until the end of the cycle, with a lot of Democratic votes coming in at the end. This was not some well-guarded secret, as everyone understood that the dynamic of election night in many states would be whether or not the Democratic votes at the end of the day would overcome the Election Day votes. Within days of the election, the president made an avalanche of fraud allegations. It was like playing whack-a-mole, Barr explained, because something would come out one day, and the next day it would be another issue. Barr told his staff very soon after the election that he didn't think the president would ever admit that he lost the election, and he would blame it on fraud, and then he would blame the actions and evidence on the Department of Justice. Barr soon took steps to investigate claims of fraud in the 2020 presidential election, even in the absence of evidence. The Department of Justice's, DOJ, long-standing policy had been to avoid any substantive investigations until after the election's results were certified. As the country's premier federal law enforcement agency, DOJ is justifiably concerned that its substantial power can influence the outcome of an election, and it has enacted policies to mitigate this possibility. On November 7, 2020, the media declared former Vice President Biden the winner of the presidential election. Two days later, on November 9th, Attorney General Barr authorized wider investigations into claims of election fraud. Barr instructed DOJ and FBI personnel to pursue substantial allegations of voting and vote tabulation irregularities prior to the certification of elections in your jurisdictions in certain cases. Barr noted that nothing in his memo should be taken as any indication that the department has concluded that voting irregularities have impacted the outcome of any election. Episodes of Government Unfiltered are produced without any additional commentary and created based on the value-for-value model. Instead of charging $15 to $40 like other media outlets, you get to decide what it's worth to provide an open and available reading of this document. Please support the podcast at governmentunfiltered.com by clicking on the support button for a one-time donation. You can also click on the contact button and ask for an address if you'd prefer to mail a check. Thank you to associate producer Jay Bernhard, and all of the insiders who support at patreon.com slash Timberlane Media. 
For those of you who would like to provide an anonymous donation, you can go to glow.fm forward slash insider. Follow the show on Twitter at GovUnfiltered or on Facebook, facebook.com slash government unfiltered. Thank you for listening.